Hello, how's everybody doing? This week, I'd like to talk about the dreaded tone curve. <laughs> I know if, if you've just clicked in and you heard me say the word tone curve, I know you probably want to click and move away. I don't want to hear anything about the tone curve. And I used to be the same way. To me, it was like math. You know, if you want to talk numbers and math, I'm fine. I'll, I'll work anything you want me to work. But you start throwing numbers and letters together like an algebra or geometry, you lost me. I don't even want to talk about it. And that's kind of how the tone curve was for me until I learned just the very basics of it. I'm not talking a deep drill dive into it, just the very basics of it. And you can see how much it can help in developing, developing your photograph. Now, I was talking with a friend of mine earlier this week, and we were talking about tone curve, and, and he finally said, well, it's real powerful and everything, but God, I sure wish that you could put a mask on, and then within that mask, use a tone curve. And that's when the light came out and went, aha, you can do that, you can do that. And while we were talking about Lightroom, I said, well, we can use Lightroom's little brother, Adobe Camera Raw, and do that masking and tone curve at the same time. And if you anybody's not familiar with Adobe Camera Raw, you might see it listed in a book or in instructions ACR, and that just stands for Adobe Camera Raw. And it's really an application that works in conjunction with Photoshop. Because if you use Photoshop, you know that you can't process a raw photo in Photoshop. It automatically launches ACR. You process it like you would in Lightroom, and it outputs into Photoshop as a TIFF file or a PSD file so that you can then go ahead and process the photograph further. But if you're familiar with Lightroom, if you've never seen a Adobe Camera Raw, you'll recognize all the features right away because when I say it's Lightroom's little brother, it really is. It is 95% the same thing that you find in Lightroom. It's just a different look application. right? Adobe Camera Raw, while like I said it's 95% the same as Lightroom, it has 5% of some things that Lightroom doesn't even have. And one of those is for you to be able to make a mask and then use the tone curve within that mask. And if you know about masking, masking only affects a certain part of the photograph. So that means I can use a tone curve to affect just that area of the mask. If we look at the tone curve, here we are in Lightroom now. If we look at the tone curve in Lightroom, when I make a change, it affects the whole photograph. There's no way for me to say, oh, I just want you to affect the sky. It can't do it. So that's where the power of Adobe Camera Raw comes into play. Now, if you're not familiar with a tone curve, some people get it confused and think it's kind of like adjusting um, your luminance and um, your exposure and it's not that at all the tone curve is for adjustments in contrast and sure you know contrast when you make changes in contrast it's going to affect the luminance because what does contrast contrast do it makes dark things darker and light things lighter so while you're performing that contrast action some things are going to get darker and some things are going to get lighter that doesn't mean it it's an exposure setting it is not it's purely contrast all right, so you can see uh, this is the tool over here on the right in Lightroom, and it's kind of divided up in zones, the left side being your darks, the middle being your midtones. You have another column here, and that's kind of like the light midtones, and then you have lights. So any adjustments you make in one of these zones will affect that specific area on your photograph. So if you grab it down here where your darks are and you pull it up, you can see it affects your darks. Primarily, it's going to affect a lot because you can see up here the curve is also moving in the light area. And this is where you get what you'll always hear people say the S curve. Because if we have just one point on this curve, it's going to affect everything from darks to light. But if we put another point here in lights and bring it down, we now get an S curve. So the effect stops at this point in luminance and then changes beyond that point. So if we make just a, a nice S curve like this, you can see if we go before, after, we get a big change. Now, you have to be careful with it because you're changing contrast. You can see down here, things are starting to get a little flat. So uh, you, you have to be careful how you use it. It's a very picky tool, very picky. So sometimes it's hard to uh, maneuver this curve just the way you want. 
using your mouse you know it's easy to make really wide swings when you don't mean to another tool to remember is under the output column if you double click here and then use your up and down arrows you can make little one percent increment changes which will then make the tool a lot more effective for you just another another tip there all right so like i was saying uh this tool can do uh, any number of things. Uh, I showed you this output. If you want to click on just one certain part of the photograph and find out where it is in your tone curve, if you grab the little color picker right here, click on it, and then hover over any part of the photograph and click again, you can see it makes a new spot right there. So now we can grab that spot, move it up and down, and we're just affecting that certain area of the photograph. And look, I'm bringing this down, see how much it makes the sky look better. But it's also affecting everything down here, and we don't want that, all right? We want to be able to just affect the sky. So if, like, we wanted to uh, we'll take our color picker and look at the uh, sunset colors coming in, we can darken those. And, and then look, they're getting better, but everything's getting dark. You know, I mean, we could put points all over the place, but it's still going to affect other parts of the photograph. So that's the problem that my friend and I were talking about, and that's the whole point of this video. So now that we've seen the basic mechanics of the tone curve, let's go ahead and we're going to reset this. And I'm going to go up to basic, and I'm just going to hit auto and just put some basic changes on there, nothing else. And in this, in this service, session here. We're not going to finish this photograph. I just want to show you the power of using an Adobe Camera Raw and how we can make changes to the sky with the tone curve that just beat the pants off anything else you're going to be able to do with just a few short clicks. So in Lightroom we're going to go uh, you can right click and go to uh, Photoshop or you can go photo edit in Photoshop. What this is going to do is take this photograph and launch it into Photoshop. From here, we want to get to the Adobe Camera Raw filter. The first thing I'm going to do though, like we do always, Control J to make a new layer because um, Photoshop is destructive. So we want to make sure we have our base background layer left alone so any changes we make don't change the background layer. And I'll usually just double click on that and we're going to call this Curves. Next thing is to go up under Filter. We're going to go to Adobe Camera Raw or Camera Raw Filter. And it's going to launch Adobe Camera Raw. And you can see we're on version 15.2. These are all our controls. And if you look at them, they look surprisingly like Lightroom. You know, our this is our basic panel, uh, uh, editing panel. We have the uh, healing tools. We have our masks. And these look exactly like what we have in uh, photo. I mean Lightroom. We have our red eye, and if you use presets, all your presets you had in Lightroom, they're here for you too in Adobe Camera Raw. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to mask this sky so we can use curves to enhance it. So we'll go over here to our masks, we'll grab sky, and it works real quick. I personally don't think Photoshop's masking is good as Lightroom's, so we'll have to do a little cleanup, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, but I just want to show you this extra feature that Adobe Camera Raw has over Lightroom that I really, really like. What we're going to do is we're going to clean up this mask, so we're going to go to Subtract, and we're going to choose Select Objects. Now, in Lightroom, when you choose Select Objects, every time you want to select another object, you have to go up again. Subtract, Select, Object, Subtract, Select, Object. So if you have five objects that you want to take out of the mask, that's five different clicks. Not so in Adobe Camera Raw. You just keep on clicking, and it keeps the Select Object active. So we're going to choose Select Objects. Let's make our brush a little smaller. And I'm going to hit the Lighthouse like this. And see, it's cleaned up the Lighthouse. Now, I'm not going to do anything but keep on clicking. So I want to take it all the uh, masking off this building. I want to take it off this building and this building. Let's come up here and grab this whole building here. And notice I don't have to keep going back and choosing object selection. It knows that I'm still using the tool. And as long as I keep selecting things, it'll keep selecting for me too. 
All right. Got a little bit over here on this rock. A little bit in the bush over here. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're going to concentrate on using our curves layer within our mask. And if we look over here on the right, you can see these are all the objects that I selected. And these are all the tools I can use to change my mask. And as you'll notice, we have our light, exposure, contrast, color, our hue and saturation, and our favorite tool, curves. All right, so I'm first going to change the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to bring it down and give it a little contrast and maybe a couple more white and a little less black. Now I want to go to my curves because now that I've made some basic light changes, I see the areas that I want to work on. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick my color picker here. I'm going to choose an area that I want to work on. Now I'm just going to click and hold my mouse button down and you can see it brings a slider out and I can slide back and forth. If we look at our curves you can see I'm right on uh, the midtones or light midtones and it's bringing the curve down right there. Alright so now I've just made changes to that area that luminance area right there. If you wanted to try to change on your own you could bring this area up this would bring out some of the darks a little bit, makes a nice little uh, curve for luminance in that area. Now we might want to click and hold over these clouds and I want to brighten them or, or bring more contrast to them. So I'm going to bring that down like that. And then I'm going to go up here to this blue and I'm just going to increase this just a little bit. All right, so there's my before and after before and after with three little clicks and slides. Now that's a crazy looking tone curve. I usually don't see them like that, but we're all doing it by feel. And that's what counts, that we're doing it by feel and getting it the way to look like we want. Now we also, remember we have the red, green, and blue. So I can click on the red. And if there's any area that I want to bring more red out, let's go look over here and see what this will do. Maybe just a little tiny tweak there. And I'm going to grab my blue, I'm going to hover in this area, and I'm going to bring that out just a little bit. Maybe come up here, and bring a little yellow in, slide a little bit to the yellow. Don't really think, well, let's see if we can bring some magenta in, yeah. Just a little magenta, different parts of our tone curve we can affect. You can play with it and see if that works for us in any other place. Oop, too much. If we hover in the blue area, we can maybe a little green coming in. No, too much. So I'll bring it back down. So we're getting a little magenta in our darker areas right here because that's where we were kind of on our midtones. So with three points, one, two, three. We've made the changes from this to this. And remember, this is kind of like just using basic light. And this is using our tone curve. But notice more than anything, nothing changed down here. We've made nothing but changes to the sky for our tone curve. If we wanted to do the same thing in this area here, we could throw another mask on, like maybe a linear, linear gradient. Just hit this area like this. We'll go to our masking uh, luminance. Let's see if we can bring bring the shadows down a little bit. getting a little too green but just just for the sake of uh, an example I just wanted to show you what it would look like now the one thing you have to remember um, with using a Toby Adobe camera Raw, if you want to go back just out of your masking and go back to your editing you do have to click on the little editing icon here and that gets rid of your mask and you can start working from there if you wanted to put another mask on let's say we'll use a brush and 
we'll keep uh, the flow like at 50 percent a nice feather we could go ahead and and paint on some areas here and you could use the um, the regular light exposure to bring these out maybe put a little gold light on them but you then also have your tone curve available to you if you wanted to make some subtle changes to the light and dark area like this again I'm just touching the curve itself if you wanted to remember your color picker and go to one certain area and then you have that available start touching and, and changing the contrast in that area so that is the use of the tone curve processing a raw photo but you'll be doing it in Adobe Camera, Adobe Camera Raw and not in Lightroom once you have your photo done if you're comfortable staying in here you can do all the rest of your changes instead of hopping hopping back over to Lightroom but if you feel more comfortable in Lightroom what you want to do is click OK you then want to go to file and save and it will take this photograph it'll save it right here see so save 99 percent if you hop back into Lightroom you'll see your photograph is now in Lightroom with all the changes you made in photo, uh, Adobe Camera Raw. And you can go, uh, like if the oranges were driving you crazy, you could go to HSL, grab your orange under saturation, bring that down a little bit. If the blue is not blue enough for you, you can crank that up or you could drop it off a little bit. And also at this point, you know, you could also throw a, uh, a linear gradient on say like right here that you wanted to affect the blue of the sky so let's change look at the temp here so we have the ability to change with a linear gradient some of the masks that we had in, in Adobe Camera Raw so you can get your major changes done and that particular mask in Adobe Camera Raw pop back over into Lightroom use uh, more masks to customize this color and this sky the way you want and have a perfectly good photograph using masking with a tone curve and only changing those areas you want to change I hope this helps out if anybody has any questions about this or needs help with it please don't hesitate to contact me and I'll help you out any way I can I'll talk to you guys soon.